Hi, guys, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. We have another great show for you today. We have Dr. Tan with us today, and she is amazing. However, I want to get started with a fun little quote for you guys, something to think about, you know, also as we go through this journey. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the dark. And that is a very true saying. So you've got to find that inner light to beat the darkness out of you, so basically. But it's something to ponder on and think about and stuff. But before we get started um, with Dr. Tan, because um, you've got a lot of great qualities. I'm going to just skip ahead. And how many weddings have you been to in the past 10, 15 years? I would say off oh, the top of my head, it's actually probably about eight weddings. Eight weddings. Okay, so you're familiar going into the ceremony, and usually they have the guest book for you to sign. Well, Life on Record is making it a little different. They have a vintage rotary phone for the guests to pick up and leave the message. So you can leave a one minute, five minute, even 30 minute, but don't do the whole 30 minutes because... You're going to have a line. <laughs> so, but what's awesome about that right next to it is a QR code. So you can take out your own phone, scan it, and you can leave them a message before, during, or after. I wouldn't interrupt the ceremony doing it during, but it's options and it's great. So after they get all the recordings, they will burn this onto a 12 inch vinyl record or they have this cute little boom box. I call it the boom box. And it stores all of your guest voice messages. And I love that concept because you get to sit back, hear people's voices, and just have that reflection time. You know, because you can tell a lot in a personality when you hear their voice. It could be like, yeah, you finally got married. Or it could be like, congratulations, you know, <laughs> you did it, bro. This is what you got to do, you know. So there's so many different options. You get the phone number for one year and plans start at $99. So that is another great thing. It's very nice. It's very rememberable and very affordable. You can visit them at www.lifeonrecord.com. So Dr. Tan is a grief specialist. She is a life mastery coach. I said that right. And you help people with trauma when they have gone through it. And you've helped like literally over 25,000 people. That's a lot of people. Um, Your services and what you know is going to help a lot of people out there. So I am very happy that you're on our podcast to talk about what it is you do. But so I'm going to just dive in right away. And so when did you get to know you wanted to do this? And you know, what was it like for you going through schooling and the coaching and helping people? We just want to hear it all. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Nadine. Well, firstly, being a when when do I get to when did I know I want to do this? Well, I would say firstly, what does recovering from grief and trauma means to you? Yeah, me recovering from grief and trauma means to be able to fully live with freedom and lightheartedness be able to love again, to be able to feel joy fully, and to be able to be at ease, going to sleep, feeling at ease, waking up, feeling at ease. And so that is when when I was able to feel and uh, to feel that and, and being able to be in touch with that. And, and at some point, actually, to be able to envision that, that's when I actually started to say you know what this is something that I want for my not only myself but also others who can who deserve we all deserve to be able to be able to live fully and and love fully and be at ease and fully joy again yes yes I mean fearing you know I'm gonna use me as an example because I think a lot of people know already 
that I lost my best friend last year. And um, it's, it's hard, of course, on all her friends and her daughter, especially, and grandson left behind and son behind and mom. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm naming all these people, but like, it's just hard for anybody to go through this. And you have the mixed emotions. And so when you're out there, I guess, talking to them to feel this joy again, it's like you almost got to say they're in a better place. That's what I got told before. They're in a better place and it kind of eases the heart. But then there's some people like, no, I miss them. I want them back. You know, you'll go through every emotion and it comes in spurts like for really quick. I'm just but I, I knew she was very sick. I knew she code blue three times already. So it was just a matter of time. So I was able to prepare myself in a way before that this could be a possibility. And then on top of that, I didn't have like, it took about five or six months for me to be like, God, why did you take her? Like, I was like, why did it take that long? But that helped me too. Like coming out, I've been easier to breathe. And my main goal is I want to make sure her daughter and grandson are always doing good. So that is like my promise to her. And even when she was here, I had, I promised that to her. So, but um, definitely, um, but go on, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that's that's definitely you say it very well. And and firstly, my heart goes out to you and to her family. And I can only imagine a, a loss is always a lot of time very difficult. But when somebody complete their own journey on their own account, it brings even more mix of emotions to the one who are here still and and so my heart goes out to you i can only imagine how you feel at different times as you say and then it's very true and 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 it's one of those things where there is a difference between the mind and the heart actually with your friend as you mentioned yes she was she was having a lot of physical challenges she had cold blue multiple times and so our logical mind can say, yeah, you know what, he's, she's no longer in pain, she's not, uh, she's in better place. Yeah. I'm good up here. But our hearts still cry, our hearts still broken, our heart says, yeah, but I wish she never had to go through all those, firstly. I wish that she's still here and miracle happened and she's better, you know, why is it just to be taken home or couldn't she be here and be better and and you know it's happened to other people i always see is hanging on and then and and so forth and that's the heart and then that is the grief grief is a lot of time it's about the heart and actually impacted affected afflicted our physical body as well and uh, and and actually one thing with a lot of confusion is people try to address grief with logic and understanding and i have many clients who are counselor and they say you know i can understand all the process and everything in my mind my heart's still screaming my heart's still in pain and and you are very correct that it is definitely a mixture of emotion and and you can understand it and then you still feel a certain way and just please know that your feelings are valid yeah definitely so i mean it's a process um i had another friend pass it's been like nine or ten years but, you know, it's over time that I learned he's definitely gone, you know, um, but it's been easier. And I just think that goes for a lot of people. It's very easy, but I, you know, I, I can't say everybody can just like hang on, but people do, I think, you know, they'll just hold on and hold on. And especially when it's like, your mom or your dad is going to be a lot deeper because you have 
those feelings that you generated because you got the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, I mean, birthdays, everything will come back and reflect on somebody, right? So I guess people will have, I call them triggers. Like they'll have that. It's almost, I'm not going to say either. It's, but it is like PTSD. Like you miss them and it's a trigger and it just rehappens. So I don't know, doctor, (laughs) am I anywhere close? (laughs) Definitely certain things can remind us to the, the the lack of presence and and it's one of those things grief is not only from death divorce dire diagnosis or job loss there are actually more than 40 different causes of grief the true definition of grief is the unsettling feelings or the mixed feelings as you say yeah. caused by hope unmet a change or a loss let me ask you, let me ask our, our listener, do you know anyone in your life who has not experienced a change, let's say in the last three or four years? And so grief can cause, uh, can be caused by change, even sometimes a, a welcome change, like getting married or graduating or, or moving or something. But yes, definitely there is there is a lot of different things that can, that can, remind us to the change or the loss or the hope unmet you know whether it is a holiday or let's say if your grief is from somebody who would love to have children but not able to have their own children they see a gathering of kids and it's bring back the pain that they yeah. feel there is but the holiday the the festivities as well as the anniversary, the, the birthday of, of a person, the, the anniversary of a, a passing definitely can be a reminder. And depend on the how how things happen, certain loss can be traumatizing. A lot of loss similar to your friend can create a second uh, a secondary trauma or the impact can be very similar to uh, to, to trauma because it's like it's something that's so sudden and so shocking for many. Yeah. And I think for me, like everybody is different, but it's like, I can still hear her talking. Like it's the funniest thing. She didn't like, (laughs) she didn't like a lot of things. She's like, I need a cigarette for this, but I love her because it's like, I know you know, oh, it's the holidays again, da, 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 da. you know, it's those things we built for the past five years as friends. It's like, I know what she'd be saying right now. And, you know, it's just a comfort. I, I still learn that um, I have a voicemail on my phone and I don't want to erase it yet because I like hearing her voice. And, you know, it's, a, you know, back to life on record having those voice captured, like, I wish I could just go back and hear that. What if I have to get a new iPhone? Is it going to be erased? What can I do with this message? You know, it's like, I really want to install it, download it somewhere to be safe, you know, but um, that, that holds on back. And, you know, like I said, just the things she would say, and we would just talk for hours, you know, that gives me comfort you know and then it's funny I don't know like my my mother sorry mom I'm bringing you into this she'll have dreams of her parents that already pass and she's like it was such a real good dream and I've had that happen a couple times but you know since the one year I actually you know I think I told you this it was really weird I felt like she was right there talking to me saying she was proud of me last night and I'm like I know what happened to me, but is this really her? You know, is she really coming through saying things are going to go good and be all right? And she's happy that I'm doing podcasts and helping. I was like, those were so many good words of encouragement. It's not like you just automatically dream that stuff or do you? Well, you know, depend on what your belief, but there is a saying that everything is energy, right? Yes. Including yes. love, and and yes, there is the physical being that, of course, we miss. We miss when somebody is not here physically, but love is energy. 
And so in that scenario, there are many, many times from many, many clients, they say, you know, I can feel the presence. And, and so the love is still here. Yeah. You, you never need to stop loving somebody. And the person whom you love and whom who, who lo love you, even though they're not here physically, their love can continue to be present. And this is something that sometimes now, firstly, like you said, you 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 know, you you have this recording and you don't want to erase it. And that's very understandable. Yeah. Sometimes we we even have people say, you know, I'm just not ready. I I I feel the pain. I still want to feel the pain of the loss, or I I I just not ready to move forward or recover from the grief. And that's okay. Everybody's different. Grief is a journey that's unique to everybody. And at the same time, sometimes we're like, well, you know, if we feel better, if we will release the pain then is that mean that we're no longer love? With Is that mean we're going to lose the connections? If we are, uh, you know, of course it's beautiful. And then, yeah, like you say, to be able to have the, the, the voice and the recording, I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure there should be a way to preserve that. And 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 at the same time, to be able to move, fo move forward, whether we move forward or not, we know that the love is still there that sees continue to be her love continue to be with you as long as you would want it and a lot of time when we're able to release the pain and the grief it's actually allow her to be or the person who's no longer here to be closer to us it's very interesting uh for me this was a few years back and I happen to have somebody who is a medium start referring to me, her clients. She start referring to me to help with clients who are grieving. And I finally said, so I, you know, thank you for the referrals. But why are you, um, you know, I, I would imagine like people go to her so she can help connect. And why are you referring them to me? And then say, you know, when you release your grief, come back to her. And, and she told me that, well, when someone is grieving, their energy state is in such a way that sometimes, depend on your everyone's belief again, but the energy of the person who's no longer here, if the, the, pers the, the, the person here, the energy state is in so much grief that it's so mixed, uh, like you say, the mix or in a turmoil, it's difficult for the, per the other person the other energy to connect and to reach through. And, and when you are in a slight, uh, in a more stable, when you're not, your heart not screaming in pain and your energy is kind of calmer, it's actually easier for her as a medium to connect the two of you together. And so back to you, you are able to feel her presence to be able to be uh, to be more connected now that you you know you six months it, it's kind of like this is not real kind of state and now you're like okay it's not here of course we are set but you are um, you you kind of like more presence and aligned and sounds like she is since love is always there even as we move forward were able to connect sometimes even better according to at least the, uh, like the uh, the medium and, and a lot of people experience you can feel their presence even more and their love even more as you allow your your broken heart to recover now here's a great story um my friend joe who passed at 86 when i met him i think he was 86 um he introduced me to karaoke and when he would sing he would always sing i did it my way and i love that song but he was so good at it uh i took it was like a grandfather to me like and my kids adored him we hung out he was like let's go get our nails done let's go pet a girl. you know it was just a fun relationship that he was that father another father figure but it's since his passing and i have alexa every time i'm getting ready 
go Alexa, play Frank Sinatra. And okay, but it's it's happened more, it's happened almost all the time. That's the I Did It My Way song comes on first. And I'm like, seriously, like why? But I went through a stage that I would just cry at my vanity and then put my makeup on. But I realized it's coming on and I'm stopped crying and I just do my makeup. And I've been like, you're here with me. I know because this song just doesn't, it usually it's a mixture of songs like, but I think he took over the whole karaoke world and that's his way of saying, I'm there with you time. So, uh, you know, it's just interesting. Yep. I had to tell you that. <laughs> so I could be happy and smile about that one, but it was a changing walk. And it just has to take time for when you grieve, letting those tears out, let them flow. Oh my goodness. It will make you feel better. And then I learned it's a day by a day, or I call it sleep by sleep because you wake up it's like a whole new day. It's a whole new feeling. I don't know what goes on in our brain when we're sleeping, but it helps for some reason. I learned that. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, sleep allows us to regenerate, right? And and definitely, it's it's not only even day by day when we're grieving. It's moment to moment. Yeah. It it's some people say. It, Am I going crazy? You know, like one one moment I feel this way, and then two hours later I feel that way, and then you know, by the evening time I feel this completely opposite way. No, it is just all the things that is going on in us that's that's brought in by grief. In addition to the physical changes, grief many people don't realize, but grief actually causes physical changes in us grief is similar to major stress and it causes inflammation in our body there has been many many studies shows this now including to the point that in some places they can do a blood test that shows the changes in, in the inflammation we know that grief can impact uh, can afflict somebody so much can cause so much changes that it can change the shape of our heart Normal heart is like Valentine. That's the, the normal shape of heart. And when someone grieving uh, pro, uh, profoundly, the heart shape looks like a bell bottom. So it's powerful enough to not only cause inflammation, but it changed the shape of our heart. And also on, in the long run causes physical ailment. A lot of time people notice skin problem, you know, chronic pain, chronic confusion, and joint and muscle and and and, and even internal uh, pro, uh, organ problems. But all those changes, all those changes, just like if you even have a, a stomach flu or something, you're like, one moment you feel this, and then you, know, you feel chilly, you feel chill, and then you feel feverish, and then you feel okay, and then you know all those things. So it's the emotion and the physical changes coming all together. And and I would I would say when we're grieving, including an anniversary, anniversary is actually a profound reminder of grief to allow ourselves moment to moment, yeah. moment. To and, and and to give ourselves just uh, uh, what we call be a heart with ears and open hand to listen ourselves with compassion. Like yesterday, you mentioned, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing here, but running into I, all these I things. Mean, I was like, this is convenient. Like, I love that you're on the show, but I was like, do I tell her? I it's been a one year anniversary as of what yesterday, and I'm just like. So that was like, I think I wrote you because I had to reschedule you. And I, I was like, I really need you. <laughs> I was like, I need you on the show sooner than later. <laughs> so It's not a beautiful example. Unfortunately, you have to experience it. But, you know, e even if your mind said, okay, I'm going to focus and I'm going to work and all these things, there is a part of you, your heart. And we know nowadays that the signal from our heart and anything going on in our heart is stronger than every signal in our body, including those from our mind. So we hear that our mind 
uh, our, our brain send signals. So sort of like your, your brain send signal to your hand and say, move your right hand, you move your right hand. Most people don't know that our heart also sends signals throughout the body. And that signal is up to 60 times stronger and faster than the one from the brain. So you might say, I'm going to schedule my day like this and I'm going to focus. But if your heart notices it's a one year anniversary and there is a part in there that is noticing that, it might say, okay, you know what? There is that friend there and I miss her. And it's uh, now that we're having opposing signal and then and, and make us run into walls and all other things. And, and when that happened, I would invite all of us to just be hard with ears and open hands for ourselves, which is listen with compassion, notice with compassion for ourselves and say, you know what, it's one of those time and, and yeah, just give ourselves a big old hug and, yeah. and with, with love and, and with open hands where we allow support and, and welcome support. Thank you for sharing with me today. And, and yeah. I said, absolutely, absolutely, you know, um, for sharing with me and, and I rearranged my schedule so we can be here. <laughs> yeah. I learned just now hearing you talk that I did it really wrong yesterday. I buried myself in work. And then I was like so busy that when it was time to get off, my first thought was her daughter. And I got on Facebook and I saw the pictures and I was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, I wrote, how are you doing? You know, I wanted to check in and you know, I, it's just, it's a whole hard thing. And then, you know what, that reminds me, I told you what happened yesterday. <laughs> I forgot to follow up with her. So I need to do that. Um, but definitely it's just, why did I do that? Did I just not honor her? Is that like, I think it's like when people bottle up their issues, they just want to throw it to the back. They don't want to go, like for me, I didn't want to relive hearing that phone call. And I remember it word by word. And it was just, my heart just stopped that day. It was just like, whoa. And it was hard because she lived in a different state. There's nothing I could do. And sadly, I couldn't even make it up there for her her funeral and that hurt me too so those things I think I just threw and I should have spent more time reflecting if I'm hearing you right and maybe I should have gone and talked to my mom or something you know or somebody else and just say today is a hard day for me you know so but then you know I even had the doctor's appointment they're like your blood pressure is high. Is it always high? And I go, no. But I was thinking, I bet that was the grief I was feeling, you know, of the day yesterday. Just it was on the rise for whatever reason. So, yeah. Grief is known to cause, I, I, I don't know exactly what's going on with you, but grief is known to cause changes in blood pressures. It's definitely is now, and, and that's include whether we want to acknowledge it or not. Now, it's very easy to look back in hindsight and say, well, I probably should have done this and that. But please know, firstly, firstly, that you know, it's always easy to look in hindsight, right? And and then the same, and so we want to just have compassion to ourselves on whatever that we did. But also it's it's one of those that in this society, in the Western society, in the modern society, a lot of time when it's something painful, it's twofold, I would say. Firstly, yeah. we were so trained to be busy, to be productive. You know, like how pro how many how productive can you be today? And and, and all this busy. And unfortunately, there is also the um, the myth or the misunderstanding. There's a lot of misunderstanding about grief out there, some 11 or 12 of them. One of them being to stay busy, to stay busy so you take your mind out of the pain, which is 
yes, it might distract you for a moment, so you're not thinking about it. But unfortunately, staying busy does not heal. It's kind of like if you were to have a broken leg, a broken bone, mm-hmm. imagine what happened if you stay busy. <laughs> it, you, you, it's, it's actually, you might, you know, if you have a broken bone and you keep walking or you keep running, eventually you fall down and, and, and hurt yourself even more. And the same thing with grief, you stay busy. Yes, you can push yourself to a degree, but the moment you stop, it feels a lot of time, a lot of time people say, you know, I travel, I do this, I go party, I do everything, I, I go drinking, whatever. And when I stop and when I there is that just even that just one minute, everything come in all together and it feels like I lost it all together. Or or even because our heart signal is so much stronger, it pushed us to perhaps saying things or being triggered or something like that but that is that is with that but and and the other part is partly uh, when you said why nobody want to feel pain and and there is a part of you in your mind that might say you know what it was so painful and i and knowing that the society unfortunately incorrect belief that well to just stay busy I'm going to just be like this today. Um, and, and, and it works for a short time, but at the end, it catch up on us. Yeah, I think I'm more like I'm getting more clarity right now, like just hearing you. I mean, maybe I should be honoring the Chronic Pain Foundation. That's what I probably need to do. And there was, um, she was an artist and she was a good one but cards for warriors she would do card drawings and send it out i never knew i just like she would always be like what's your address i go no you're not sending me anything and oh i have to no 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 and it was towards the very end i finally gave her my address but right before she's gone you know i was getting these letters in the mail from other people around the world Go, you're a warrior. You're going through chronic pain. Love and light. We love you. We're thinking of you. You get through. And that was so touching. Like, even though we could be so stubborn and hardcore in life and be like, no, no, no. But actually, it's well appreciated, you know? And I think that I know that organization is amazing. So it's good to know there's other like cheering you on and you may not know them in the world and I think a lot of it is our talks back and forth charity and I would talk about the world this needs to be addressed this needs to be that's it that's it I okay so here I am with a podcast addressing (laughs) issues so no wonder if she's my biggest cheerleader right now yeah so keep hope alive has a lot to do with my friend Charity too. Um, so it's just getting out there, especially with health and grief. And, you know, there's many things that go on in this world that we just don't pay attention to. So if our eyes are wide open, we can see this and we can learn through other people's stories. And then like exactly what, talking about stories, let's go into your story you have a couple books right (laughs) i do i do yeah tell us about that (laughs) i have uh you can sort of see this in the screen i think you i have books uh well one book is this is actually a gratitude book designed for adult and children it's allowed people to write their gratitude as well as to do drawing and then the other book here is called seeking peace and uh, the proven five fingers method to thrive through change effortlessly. They are both available on um, uh, Amazon in any country. The uh, the seeking piece is to help people navigate through grief and changes. Yeah. Uh, and that is something, this one's par- uh, written partly from my experience talking about story. A lot of time people say it's more, what takes me to work in to 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 even think about grief? I experienced grief since I was five or three years old, 
and a multitude different one. And actually, with seeking peace, the one uh, the, a few uh, the year before, my dominant hand suddenly become paralyzed. <laughs> And I was in Los Angeles, and all the top doctor, neurologists, some um, holistic medicine, chiropractors, you name it, they tried it. Nobody could figure out why. And and it was one of those things where I I I've been coaching people for quite a long time by then on how to release grief, but also how to navigate through adversity. And I finally said, you know what? I help people with this. So why don't I use my own tools? Yes. Well, and, and thankfully doing that, even though it was quite life-changing and, and there were other things going on. My, my mother was ill, my relationship dissolved and so forth. I actually was able to move through it with a lot more ease and a lot more peace and joy. Yeah. Even as it was going on, unlike in the past, I always, and most of us, we move through things eventually, but usually with a lot of heartache and a lot of struggle and a lot of strain and worry. And then I was like, well, you know, I moved through this with a lot more ease. And then, and then actually, I think because of the state that I was, I was able to be more resourceful and here my 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 hand as well as my mother all within six months instead of typically it took me years and years to move through something and so in seeking peace i share the tools to move through grief and adversity using your five fingers so uh, to help you remember it's kind of like one two three four five and yeah. so in detail so that is about the the, the two books yeah Oh, wow. Yeah, I definitely need to buy one. Of the top one, I really, well, I want both of them. <laughs> but I think when you're journaling and can write things out, that is really healing. And it will help people with self-love too, because you'll get a better understanding where you're coming like from in your heart. You know, what are the things that trigger you? If you could just narrow it down, write it out, go one by one and learn from them, it's going to get easier. So it just feels like, you know, our minds will take that. You said your heart cries. But somehow we need both of them to work together and be yeah. like, you know what? You didn't have to work like an overwork yourself. You didn't give out that good cry. So probably tonight, because I always talk to charity when I'm driving, I was like, you just can't talk back. You have to listen to me. <laughs> but that's how I do my prayer to her. But like, I need that good cry again. You know, I already know that inside of me because that's the thing that will help me to move on is just releasing that energy. So, yeah. but, you know, I'm glad we kind of targeted me here with I don't mind coming clear to my you know my people who watch the show and everything because you know it's the truth of the matter like you could be losing a parent you could be losing a loved one you know we don't know like when COVID hit that was hard yeah that was hard on a lot of people so you know and you just never know when your journey ends like you said, it could come just like that, or you just have time. Um, I have a couple friends that, because I'm in the event industry, they do handwriting analysis or lipstick readings or can already sense. Now, I'm not going to say everybody that can sense things about somebody are psychics. I talked to somebody on my podcast that knew a lot about me. He ain't no psychic. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like <laughs> everything that's happening in my life is just like out there. Like, how did you know? So, I mean, there's things that shock me in life that I'm still learning. And I think, you know, going through, I would definitely get your book. I want to read it word by word. Is it my question? Because I learned I hate holding the book and reading it. I'm an audible girl. So I like to listen. Is the bottom book on audible? 
It is not at this moment. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to hold it and read it. <laughs> so, it's on ebook as well as print, but not on yeah. Audible. Yeah. I don't know why with me, like when I was younger, every time the teacher would be like, read, I don't want to read. But then I'll listen to books with my AirPods and it's soothing. And I'm like, I hope even if I fell asleep early, my brain has soaked in every single word. And I know it does because uh, I was listening to one book and I guess I talked out loud and said, I already know that. <laughs> like, I don't know why I caught myself saying that, but I was already asleep. I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> but, you know, I think the more knowledge is power to healing. So but definitely on Amazon. I'm going to be adding your book to my website so people can go to keephubbelivepodcast.com and click on the store link and it'll take you right there. So also, but yeah, and the gratitude. I Yeah. How many pages? Like, I mean, how many, is it like a lot of pages you fill out or can you go into more detail about that really quick? On uh, Seeking Peace is only 100 for the, um, the actual book part is 100, 146 pages. Oh, okay. And, and the gratitude book is actually, this little book is for one year. So you don't have to keep buying gratitude book. One book is, uh, for, I, I, I believe it's 11.99 that will allow oh, you okay. to, to do gratitude and journal because it has space for journal as well as gratitude for a full year and and so now one thing for transparency sakes both uh, the proceed from e uh, from both book a hundred percent is actually donated to the international childhood cancer charity good good, good. i love hearing that i love when proceeds are giving to charity and everything so but yeah definitely um gotta go on gotta get that book guys because i mean that's just amazing. So, I mean, I can look at back at the people I've actually interviewed and I'm just like, I want their books. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to buy it. And that's the whole thing. Like, I was like, if I want their books, other people are going to want their books, you know? So I was telling my neurologist, yeah, you can actually hear them speak on my podcast and then go buy their book right away. And then I put it out there. Hey, Christmas shopping. Look at my store. Like all these books. <laughs> I think we. Um, the, gratitude book, gra the gratitude book is definitely a good one to 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 be a, to be a, a, a gift because it will last them the whole 2024. Right? So, right. Yeah, I'm just going to get everybody <laughs> that for Christmas. Some people get it as a family activity. I, I know a couple of people say, you know what, we're, we're training our kid to do gratitude. So instead of watching dinner and then jump to TV or phone right away, uh, yeah. like, okay, we have dinner and then everybody fill out their journal. <laughs> you know, that's that idea. Family bonding for a little moment. I like that attitude. <laughs> I can tell my whole gonna be gracious for what i gave you <laughs> yeah i can hear it now like but you know that is a good idea because i mean i have my son in sports he's 11 and we stay active with that but if there's no sports he's gotten me he wanted to go to church back to church he wanted to get baptized he memorizes scripture he's like uh, after I play pro football, I want to be a children's minister. And I'm looking at him, okay, we got this. But that's how we fill up the extra time. But then there's times he's like, mom, look at this on TikTok. Uh, I, I was like, no. And people said, like, when you start a podcast, it's good to have a TikTok. And I'm like, a, a TikTok? What? <laughs> like, I was like, I went to my 11 year old. I was like, I help mommy. And he's like, did you know there's a filter that can make you look really pretty? I go, oh, ooh, really? Let me touch it. So I was playing with it. And I realized I could do as many podcasts as I want, but I want people to know the real me, whether it's singing, acting goofy, just having fun. I I linked my TikTok. 
you know, it's just like, yeah, people, you know, they can know me. I don't care if I want to lay there and pretend I'm chucking at Halloween and have my dog kiss on my face. We're going to do that. <laughs> so you're authentic, you're authentic and you, you are true to yourself and, and true to your heart. I know I have a question for you and maybe other people will want to know this too. Um, pets, pets pick up on your grief. Like how do they, well, they can tell people's energy, right? So they can pick up when somebody's sick. My dog, not a service dog, but I've had a couple seizures in front of her and she automatically comes and licks my eyes. It's disgusting. I yeah. can feel it and it's what gets me out of the seizure. But I'll be like, Abby, thank you. Like, mm -hmm. you need a gold medal. I just can't put you through the whole school, you know? I'll yeah. get you a better yeah. collar. <laughs> <laughs> definitely so so the, the 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 first part is yes as uh, pets can feel the changes and the energy it's kind of like they can feel earthquake so to say okay. you know the, the pets uh yeah I, when i when whenever i'm in california the last time i was in uh, the, 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 during summer when i was in california and there was a, an earthquake and i have a pet and the cat was kind of like jumping around and I say, why are you doing that? And why are you doing that? And sure enough, five minutes later, there's an earthquake. I was like, hey, okay, um, I should have known from the cat, right? And, and yep. so the least cat, you know, we, can, we know we hear, they can hear things, they can feel things, that they, they can sense things that we cannot. They're very sensitive to vibration and, and intuitions as well. A lot of time, like your dog intuitively know to lick your eyes and help you be out of the seizure. Now, in terms of grief, as well as what's going on uh, in our heart, our feelings. So let's say some people say, oh, you know, I, I acted happy, but I could tell that the dog tell, tell or the cat could sense there is something up anyway. And that's because the, the recent study shows that what is going on in our heart actually affected other pets as well as people in the same room as far as across the room so for uh, and the, in this study what they show is so uh, they put one, a person or a dog in one corner of the room and then they they and and the dog sleeping so they are not even communicating or anything so one person or one or a dog in one corner of the room and then they have a trained personnel to come and sit in the other corner of the room they are not communicating with each other at all they don't even see each other and the trained personnel are told to say okay feel something neutral and everyone is connected to ekg those heart rhythm reading so it's subjective it's actually objective measurement and and then they say think about something neutral and then they look at everybody e ekg and they said okay that's baseline and then they have a trained personnel and they say the same persons now think about something that make you angry and they see a change in ekg over here but they also see a change in the ekg across the room including the sleeping dog and then they say, okay, now think about something that makes you happy. EKG over here change. EKG across the room change. Think about something that makes you sad and grieve and, and depressed over here change. Across the room change, which means whatever going on in our heart, the energy, the vibrations, uh, the, the, the strength, the signal from the heart goes all the way across the room affecting our pets. And they are able to feel that. And, and pets just a lot of time more, because with people was so a lot of time focused on our mind, we might feel something. I mean, if you ever, ever been, have an experience where you kind of walk in a room and there might be a two people there, they're not saying anything, but you're like, you walk in, you're like, something's not quite right with them. I better get out, get out, get out of here, you know, in <laughs> these situations. But a lot of times, sometimes we're like, okay, we're so focused, you know. You walk in the room, it doesn't feel like you're like, ah, I got this thing to do. And then you stay there anyway. And um, But that's that's our mind. But our heart, intuitively, and, and with our pets, they're still more connected to their heart. 
they can feel that and they they can feel okay you know there is this person is sad this person and and the same thing what's going on in our heart affected our body but also affected people and pets uh, outside of us and if they're in in the same room in the same house and that happens with people too i remember for karaoke of course they only do karaoke at a bar but Oh my goodness. I could feel when people were sad. And I remember I walked up and said, dude, do you want to talk about it? And he's like, you could tell I go, yeah, let me sit with you. Hi, I'm Nadine. You know, it's just like, yeah. but they were able to open up and tell me every, like, it felt like everything. And I just listened and I, you know, I go, if you want me to give you some advice, I will, but I'm not like a trained I just felt like this pull that you had to get this off of your chest, you know, <laughs> let me be the sounding board, you know, but they usually walk away. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You helped me. And I'm like, okay, God, is this my gift? So what's going on? Like, can I just spot these people from across the way? But, you know, I love hearing people's stories. And I think over the past three years, I became a better listener. That's what I've learned about myself. And I'm just like, this is good. You know, I'm not a paid counselor. I did a life coach course, but in being a certified wedding planner and doing events, you know, all that kind of ties in because a lot of it is relationship stuff. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I got this grief and it, it's, you're right there's all different kinds of beliefs and a lot of it is divorce. <laughs> I, I, I like my friend, she's a lawyer, uh, but she, uh, yeah, I think about it in second grade, she sat across from me and she became the divorce lawyer. I became the certified wedding planner. She has cabins. I'm like, I'm broke. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you know, Maybe things will pick up and people will start falling in love and realizing marriage is a way, you know, or they don't even, I don't know, just have a party to have a party. <laughs> you don't need to have the paperwork, but you know, so those are things that are yeah, make people can. happy and joyful. And that's something yeah. I kind of say I'm J-Lo in the wedding planner. I can help everybody with their happy days and their joyful days. And I love it because the energy is good. Everything's good in the world. It's great. There's a shooting star as they cut the cake. You know, I'm capturing their moments. And I, I just love that. But, you know, for me, it's like, why can't I find love one day? <laughs> it was like, and I don't ever want to ask why, 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 you know? And I'll sit here like right across from me. I graduated from weddings. Beautiful is the best thing I did. And they certified me on Christmas day. And oh. I was like, that was the best present for me. So, you know, it's just those little things that count in the world. So you got to count your blessings and just know, you know, grief is going to be hard no matter what. It just will not go away, but you can work on yourself. Right. And especially yeah. reading your book is going to help any like, educational stuff you can get into your body and, and read about it and see other experiences that's going to help too so yeah uh, absolutely it's it's a journey it's it's possible you know when one's ready it's possible to recover from your heartbreak it's re possible to release your grief but everybody has their journey yes everybody has their journey Yes, very, very, very true. So I want to thank you so much for coming on and telling us everything you do to help other people get through the grief. You know, the books yeah. are, you're an angel, like in this world that is helping. I mean, 25,000 people, come on. I'm sure it's grown already, but like, definitely. And I also really quick wanted to thank our sponsors who make this podcast, you know, keep up alive. So like I mentioned earlier, we have lifeonrecord.com. They are your interactive guest book with the rotary phone. Check them out. Then we have Party Time Texas. So your one-stop shop for all your party needs, whether you need a DJ, a band, a caterer, a photographer, a fire breather, a juggler, 
whatever you need. They got it covered. Then we have BridalShowsInc.com. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you're planning a special event, you can go onto their website. They have like four or five shows out of the year. And you can meet your vendors, learn what they do, set an appointment, get their pricing, everything. So check those out. I believe their next one is around. No, they got Lost Kalinas coming up and they have the Dallas Bridal Show at the end of January. So check those out then we have miles and smiles and her name is deborah rose she's a sweetheart she actually does the handwriting analysis and lipstick readings and she is good she incorporates all her knowledge into these events to help other people and she's so accurate i just my mouth drops open each time then we have bryce harney Oh, you know what? Let me go back. I didn't even give her website, did I? <laughs> so go to www.milesofsmilesevents.com to find Deborah. And then we have Bryce Harney, who is a magician and mind mentalist reader. He's traveling across the United States right now, doing many shows. He's been on a few TV channels. He's a really good guy. And He's passionate in what he does. So that makes him one of the best magicians out there in my books. <laughs> then our last one is Richmond Punch. Richmond Punch is a violinist, graduated from the Juilliards. He travels the United States, but his violin playing is amazing. He has played in front of a million people before, and he's been on, I think, some Lifetime shows um, playing also. So got to check him out, richmondpunch.net. Other than that, wherever you find your podcast, you'll be able to find Keep Up Alive podcast. We do have a phone number. If you um, wanted to call and leave a message for our guest, it's 833-780-HOPE, which is 4673. So you can always call that number. We added a new feature onto the website too, where you can leave a message as well. If you want to hear us talk about something different, you know, or whatever, Voice your opinion. Let us know. Other than that, it was a pleasure having you on and I appreciate you so much. So other than that, guys, holidays are coming up. Have fun shopping. Christmas is like a week away. Woohoo! <laughs> and Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. You too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Until next time. Love and light. <laughs>